Grant us, Lord, the lamp of charity which never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light on those around us, and that by its brightness we may have a vision of that holy city where dwells the true and never failing light. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Sunday morning prayer service, Rite 2. This is the first Sunday of Advent and the beginning of our new church year in our liturgical calendar. And this year, does anyone know what year this is? Mary does. It's year B. Year A flew by and we're in year B. So just don't write that on your checks, but we're in year B. And welcome also to our dear friends on Zoom today. We are always so grateful to have you with us in worship. And we also welcome our dear precious prayer books because for the season of Advent, we, our morning prayer services will be right straight out of the prayer book. So our service will begin this morning on page 75.
In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us continue to page 79 for the confession. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Okay. Most merciful God. Well, so far I can't hear anything. Confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 66. <laughs> Our service continues on page 80. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. 
Come, let us adore him. Let us turn to page 82 and read the Venite responsibly by whole verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. You may be seated for the reading of the psalm and the lessons. And following Colleen's reading of the gospel and sermon, we will observe a short silence. Let us pray Psalm 80 responsively by whole verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Let us respond to the reading with Canticle 9, found on page 86. Let us read the first song of Isaiah, responsibly by whole verse, page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. Amen. 
Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Canticle 15 is found uh, beginning at the bottom of page 91. Let us read the Song of Mary all together. Page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. This is a new year for the church. <laughs> it's funny, most of us don't think of this as a new year, just January 1st, but this is the official new year of the church. And according to the readings today, they begin in darkness and shadows of despair and war and sorrow and hate. And that goes through all history. This is actually an explanation of end times. The end times is not the explosion of the earth disappearing. It's what God does to us and changes our life. We become new life. And if you don't think dark times are still here, look at the nations who are fighting at war. Pick up the newspaper, turn on the news and see the shootings in the United States. See the unusual weather patterns which are caused by us humans. So we have a long way to go to, to get God on our side. <laughs> in Thessalonians 1, he explains, there is peace and security. Then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. This all happened with the great revolt and the falling of the Roman Empire and the destruction of their most holy possession, their temple. This is history. Dark times happen all the time in history, but history has a goal. That goal is God. Society will be redeemed and recreated by God. I mentioned the, the pregnant woman. She also goes through uh, dark times or a crisis, if you should say. In the beginning, she has at, added doctor's appointments for prenatal care, which is a pain in the neck, trying to fit those in. Then you got the morning sickness that comes. You can't even walk into a department store near a soap aisle or a perfume aisle or a paint aisle because it just turns your stomach. Then comes the water retention, swollen ankles, hard to walk, can't get shoes to fit. Then the back aches and they're very comfortable. You can't sit, you can't lay down, you can be very, very uncomfortable. Then comes those, those strong labor pains. So strong, you're not sure if you can physically handle it. Are you, are you gonna make it on the other side? Then, the new life comes and all there is is joy, new beginnings. You re don't remember any of what you went through those whole nine months. You don't remember the labor pains. You just remember the joy of this newborn life that God had given you. So Advent is the time we watch and be alert. These are times God's grace will arrive. In Mark at the end of the reading says, keep awake. It's the season preparing for Christmas in commemorating Jesus's birth. However, I don't know about keeping awake. Maybe it's time that we hand out sleeping pills. For Advent, we go shopping, shipping, buying, wrapping, baking, cooking, planning, dinners, 
parties, eggnog, cookies, and even Santa. No time for silence or prayer. And this is all going on during the four weeks of Advent. I think the need of sleeping pills is required. My brain is always thinking, did I accomplish everything today that I needed to accomplish? Did I buy everything I needed to buy for the dinner, etc.? You don't have much time to sleep, and sometimes your brain doesn't shut down when you lay your head on the pillow. That being, a, being asleep isn't what is, is being said here, being alert. God wants you to be alert, to watch for the signs when he comes into, when he comes into breaking into our lives. Being a new church year, filling us with hope for new beginnings. With all that's going on, there, there's time that we need expecting God to come, waiting for Jesus to come the second time, praying for them, and sitting in silence in God's presence. Remember, Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago, and we have to wait and expect Jesus to come again, just like the pregnant woman. When we invite Jesus to come into our hearts in every day, in our everyday lives and in the world, we will feel the joy and the hope of a new life in ourselves and new life in the new year of the church. Each week, a new candle is lit for symbolism to remind us the first candle is hope, the second candle is joy, the third candle is peace, and the last candle is love. There is good news. There is always hope with God's grace that everything will follow joy, peace, and love. Amen. Let us now stand as you are able and affirm our faith by saying all together the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us lift up to the Lord suffrages A, by call and response, and let us have the epistle side leading and the gospel side responding. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And bring us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Our colic for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our colic for mission is found on page 100. Let us read all together the last prayer on the page, page 100. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. We are invited to come into God's presence, not only with our alms and our offerings, but with open hearts, with which to listen deeply, meditate, and respond, for God is always with us. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 60, Creator of the Stars of Night.
we pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Lord, as you come to us on this first day of Advent, you are a beacon in our hope for the new year beginning today. And we pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. As we light the candle of hope, we ask that you inspire that hope in our hearts and in our lives and help us to inspire that hope in the lives of others for the peace and solidity and solidarity of all peoples of the world, asking Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, as we consider the end times, we ask that hope allow us to see this year the end times of war, the end times of injustice, the end times of suffering, of hatred, and of bad will toward people. We ask that you open the eyes of our heart to be alert to the candle of your hope and good works and love that we may help in any way possible to achieve world peace, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We let the light of hope shine forth in our hearts and lives. Please let it also shine forth in the hearts and lives of those on our prayer chains, both public and private, those who are without housing, those who are wracked with guilt, those who are separated from your love or too afraid to approach it. Lord, we ask that you help us to shine that light in the world, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you help us to conquer all things that make us unhappy and sad. We ask that this new year bring a renewed respect for your creation and every element of your creation into which you blew the same sacred breath. Let us feel joy at that creation and protect it for future generations, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all of those who spread your word in the world, all communities of faith. We especially pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of North India. And in the Vermont cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry of the 11th Bishop of Vermont, our own Bishop Shannon. We also pray for our own Father Jeremy and for all our lay ministers and those who minister to your people in all parts of the community, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, when we close our service today, knowing that this is the first Sunday of Advent, knowing that your light is the hope of the world, let it be the hope of our lives. Let us carry that light forth outside these doors and spread it to the good of the world. Amen. Let us now say all together the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Our final hymn is hymn 490. I want to walk as a child of the light.
as our candle of hope blazes in front of us and behind us. Now we can be hopeful because we have a lot of announcements and there's a lot to look forward to. First of all, please everyone join us in the parish hall for coffee hour. And next Sunday, uh, the 10th, December 10th, Father Jeremy will be back with us here to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, right one at eight o'clock, uh, either here or the chapel, and at 10 o'clock, right two here in the sanctuary. Then the next Sunday, December the 17th, we will have morning prayer, right one at eight, right two at 10. And then the next Sunday, guess what? It's Christmas Eve. And Christmas Eve morning is, since it's a Sunday, we have our, our regular services uh, with Father Jeremy, Holy Eucharist at 8, and Holy Eucharist at 10. That's Christmas Eve morning. Then Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock, we have our uh, Christmas Eve service with all the trimmings. So there's a lot to choose from on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, um, on Monday, Christmas Day, there's one service here at nine o'clock, the Eucharist with Father Jeremy, and then there's a service at 11 o'clock at St. James in Arlington. And all these services will be uh, listed in the clarion, and we will continue to remind you until we're blue in the face so that everyone um, will have the service of their choice. And if you have any questions, please, you can call the office. Shirley has a crystal ball on her desk and she has all the answers. And I believe, Mary, you have a, an important announcement. I do. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you probably all saw, if you get the clarion, the article about the upcoming pins party on December 17th. But, uh, and, and, and I also want to give a lot of thanks to Kathy Perkins, who started this tradition many years ago. So we all need to join in this year. Um, in case you didn't read the whole article, I will briefly summarize that it is for foster children in our community. We thus far have 48, and actually registrations are closed, unless, of course, we would never turn anybody away. But, as far as we know, there will be 48 children coming. Each one will receive a small gift bag with a couple of crafts and an age appropriate gift. So um, we will also be serving uh, food, sandwiches and cookies. And um, we of course have a Saint Nick coming to hand out the gift bags. And we also have a magician coming. So we have a lot of craft tables so that all the kids can make crafts for either gifts or to take home. So if anybody would like to help man a craft table, which I always think is a lot of fun, um, please let me know if you'd like to help in any other way, um, whether you want to be there on that day and help do things or whether you want to bring cookies or rolls or lunch meat or make a contribution any way that you want to help, we will most appreciate it. Thank you. Thank oh, and you. it's from two to five on the 17th. Thank you, Mary. And I believe we just got word um, yesterday uh, that Kathy Perkins has a great big ax in her pocket. She's going out on Thursday and chopping down two Christmas trees for the parish hall. So on Friday at 10 o'clock, everyone is invited to come to the parish hall to decorate so everyone come it'll be a, a good oh lorraine i'm sorry do you have an announcement for the community cafe i bet you do not not for the community cafe today but for the spirit of sharing the tree we have moved to the front of the church here there are still a few tags on it if you're if you don't know about it um, we're asking folks that can and are able and would like to, to choose a tag from the tree, to buy one item for a child. We have adopted two, child, two families. There are eight children in total. We've already accomplished a lot of shopping, uh, but there are still a few tags left. Um, and just by the way, Community Cafe here at St. Peter's is amazing and awesome. 
and for all the people that joined us yesterday last minute to, to pitch in and help, we really appreciate it. We're doing good stuff there, so thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order? Nancy? Thank you, Nancy. We will look, be looking forward to that next week. Thank you for that very much. Any other announcements? Yes, very possibly, Carol. Thank you. Yeah. During Advent, we are waiting, expecting, longing, preparing our hearts to really want what God wants, which may be our own emptiness, to fill with God instead of with ourselves. So now let us turn one more time in our prayer book to page 102, the last page in our service, and let us shout out all together our closing verses from Ephesians, the last blessing on the page. Page 102. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.